Food for Thought shows what happens when you clown around and find out. Directed by Rodman Flender, written by Larry Wilson, and shot by Rick Boda. Based on a story from Tales from the Crypt number 40, drawn by Jack Davis. Plenty of acts are crammed into this circus tale. Zambini, the psychic, cannot read his wife-slash-assistant Connie's mind. This handicap to his ability angers him especially since she can read his mind. Connie is at her breaking point with her husband's abuse. Zambini wants his dessert, his very special dessert, the kind that only Connie can give. Not tonight. Yes, tonight and every night. You know you can't deny me. My hands are on you, Connie. Zambini performs his act for that night's audience. A blindfolded Connie will announce his thoughts to the crowd. Our psychotic, I mean psychic clown, finds the perfect audience member to demonstrate on, having the man silently pick a passage from his own Bible. And now, Sultana, I am looking at a passage. Can you tell me what that passage is? Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. She's absolutely right! <laughs> Impatient for Zambini to finish, some of the other acts pick on the circus's gorilla. Johnny the Fire Eater has some words about that. The mind-reading performance finishes. Connie comes out, and Johnny catches her eye. The others talk about Zambini. He is not well-liked. Connie wants to stay and talk, but her husband won't allow it. I didn't ask you what you wanted. It's time for dinner. Let's go. Hey, she wants to stay. She can stay. You'd do better to mind your own damn business, boy. Let's go. And I'm not going to ask you again. The circus has closed. All is quiet. In the darkness, Marta meets Eric. In an expository conversation worthy of any soap opera, Marta laments her marriage to Carl. She is a telepath, but Carl can control which of his thoughts she can read. Unfortunately for Marta, Carl never loved her. She is nothing more than the other half of their mind-reading act. Animal trainer Eric wants Marta to run away with him to another circus. Carl awakens to Marta's absence. Searching through the night, he spies his wife with Eric, hearing their plan to leave together. With his anger boiling over in his tent, Carl spots a newspaper headline of a wild beast tearing people to pieces in a graveyard. This gives him an idea. Zambini sleeps. Connie sneaks out. Johnny gets serious with her, confiding that he is leaving the circus for a normal life. He wants her to come with him, to get away from her abusive husband. Connie is too afraid of Zambini, and she thinks Johnny should be too. The two begin their affair. Of course, this is when Zambini suddenly hears Connie's thoughts. Oh, Johnny. Connie. Connie hears her husband's thoughts too. Scared, she runs back to her trailer. Zambini is excited. He can finally read Connie's mind. Connie is understandably upset by this news. Carl pretends to sleep when Marta returns to their bed. Now he is the one who sneaks off to see Eric, surprising the animal trainer with a loaded gun. Calling the shots, Carl leads Eric to the lion cage. He wants the object of his wife's affection to get in with the ruthless creature. Without his whip, Eric will be helpless. Carl pushes Eric into the cage. The lion tears him to shreds. The screams wake up the entire circus. Everyone, including Marta, is too late. Defeated, Marta returns to her tent. Everyone believes Eric perished while practicing his lion-taming act, but Marta knows this was Carl's doing. 
Johnny sees Connie's black eye. Her husband did this to her, but she doesn't care about Zambini anymore. She's running away with Johnny. What? I'm going with you. Are you sure? All I know is I can't get you out of my mind. Uh-oh, you know what that means. Zambini knows what's up. After Connie returns home, he pays her beau a visit. I'm teaching you a lesson, Buck. You play with fire, you get burned. I knew Connie thought Johnny was hot stuff, but this is ridiculous. The commotion wakes up Connie and the rest of the circus. They stand before Johnny's charred remains. Marta will never forgive Carl. The circus cancels its next performance due to Eric's tragedy. As everyone pitches in dismantling the tents, the main support beam of the Big Top falls, crushing Carl, killing him on impact. Marta shows no emotion, but Carl is not dead, merely paralyzed, unable to speak. Marta can read his thoughts. The Undertaker arrives. Marta begs him to wait. Carl is relieved. His wife will save him. She asks that her husband not be embalmed, but to be buried as is. Those would have been his last wishes. Marta looks into Carl's eyes and tells him goodbye. At the funeral, Marta hears all of Carl's frantic thoughts as he is buried alive. That night, Carl still sends his thoughts out to Marta. Air is running low. He needs her to rescue him. Luckily, someone above ground is digging up his grave. Carl is saved. Not really. Remember that newspaper detailing the graveyard bodies torn to pieces by a beast? Well, this is no wild animal. It is a ghoul. And this ghoul sinks its teeth right into Carl. Connie packs her things and finally leaves her husband. Drinking the night away, Zambini telepathically contacts Connie, demanding she come back to him. She answers back. She can't stay away from him. Suddenly, she's there. I want my dessert. You! This is for Johnny. I want to taste your mind. It wasn't Connie's mind that Zambini was intruding on, but a very hungry primate's. Circus settings are always visually interesting, and we have some familiar faces occupying the background of the tents in this tale, including Phil Fondacaro and Doug Jones as a contortionist. The comic has enough ideas to fill multiple episodes, the most disturbing of which takes over the second half. Carl is left powerless, at the mercy of the wife he dominated over. Only she can help him, and chooses not to. It's a cold and demented concept, but one we are totally on board with. We want Marta to get her deserved vengeance. I wish the show took more cues from that part of the story. I am overly familiar with seeing Ernie Hudson as Winston in Ghostbusters, so his cruel portrayal of Zambini was all the more disturbing. Of course, we are happy to see Connie run away, but it would have been nice if she had more of a hand in her husband's demise. I don't know how I feel about the ghoul and gorilla. In both versions, the husband gets all torn up, inside and out. The foreshadowing for these creatures is there, more so for the episode's gorilla, with some narrative sleight of hand, making us think we're hearing Connie's thoughts, but always having Nabunga the gorilla an arm's length away from us as the voiceover plays. The comic briefly displays the newspaper headline, but did we really need a ghoul? Knowing your wife orchestrated your being buried alive is morbid enough. Zambini's demise did look plenty gruesome. I hope Connie got a taste of his final thoughts. 